All right, welcome back. We continue live right here. Bob Pompey, any Paul Zeiss with you. We have Sean Kramer on Twitter at KD Pomp. He says, uh, Penguins need to quit taking penalties, guys. The PK was on the ice for half of the second period, keeping playmakers off the ice. Then again, scoring is coming from the bottom six. And the Bluger line, once again, was, I thought, very responsible tonight. Paul, the Evgeny Malkin line with Kapanen and Zucker almost <laughs> is invisible. We haven't heard their names. And regardless of shots or regardless of whatever they generate in terms of potential opportunities, their job is to put their name on the score sheet. And they have not done that. No, but Malkin took a penalty tonight, so does that count as getting on the score sheet? I, I mean, first you know, one all I, year, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the second line has been non-existent really for most of the entire season. I mean, that, you're not going to win and not going to be able to compete. Uh, if you can't get something more than they're getting out of that line. I mean, I think the first line has played really, really well, uh, the last, especially the last few games. The third line, I think, has been pretty good almost the entire season. It's really time for them to – and I don't know what you really do, Bob. I mean, it feels like they've got the right three guys on their second line. It's just – and part of it, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately, Malkin is such a huge part of that. Um, you know, I think he sort of rubs off on the other two. And if he's not playing well, it's hard for those other two guys to play well, too. So uh, it really, to me, comes down to Malkin has to get in gear um, or this is going to be a long season. And not that I would expect the Jankowski line to be a uh, regular contributing uh, on the score sheet, but I do expect more than what I've seen. They, they started very well in the opener in Philadelphia, but they have not been all that good. That, I know in practice they've put – Jankowski in front on the power plays, a big body, maybe utilize him there to get some jump start out of him, but so far that hasn't worked as well. Let's go to the lines, Paul. We got Joe in Lake Trobe, Pennsylvania, leading us off tonight. What's up, Joe? Hi. Um, I got a couple questions. Uh, first of all, about the Penguins. Why are the Penguins hesitant in putting Sam Lafferty on the first or second line? Also, the Pirates, the center, who, the center field in position. What, what, are you confident in the, the guys they have? Like Stokes, Alford, or Goodwin. I need. I'd like your response. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Well, Joe. First of all, Alford is a guy that you know Toronto drafted in third round. He has a lot of potential, but he's 26. At some point, you got to start living up to this potential. Whether or not he gets that chance, Goodwin's a guy with a minor league contract. I don't know what I'd expect from them, Paul. What I do expect is for a bounce back from Brian Reynolds. They can't afford to have him be a 189 hitter. I think Polanco, they can only hope that he starts well so they can trade him at some point, right? Yeah, and it's going to be difficult because of that contract. I mean, if you think about it, Bob, he's making $11 million this year, and if they want to buy him out at the end because, he's, you know, they buy out his option, it's going to be another three. So, essentially, he's a $14 million player, and – as we all know, he's not a $14 million player, but that's what they're going to have to pay him, which is why he's going to be in right field every night. And as you said, you hope he catches fire and some team, you know, an outfielder gets hurt or something on a team that absolutely desperately needs an outfielder and they come to try and get him. Um, but to me, you know, in center field, it's going to be Alford or, or, or Goodwin, I would think. And you know, we just have to see how it plays out in training camp. So Kumar Rocker is the prize of being the worst team in baseball, and the Pirates will have that selection, and they will make him their number one pick. So the question I have, and I brought this up last night, and I'm, I'm first of all, I understand the Pirates are not going to want him to immediately jump here because they want to delay his entry into, ba uh, into the majors so that they could time it with other guys who may develop as well. For example, keep Brian Hayes, have another good year. He becomes a fixture. Then you hope guys like Cool or Brubaker or others – um, but at some point, the Pirates overall in the past have decided to really delay people from getting to the big leagues. If this kid is ready to play right now, if he's ready to pitch right now, should he pitch right now, Paul? Well, I mean, you and I can sit here and say yes, but you know what's going to happen, Bob, don't you? You understand what's going to happen. And it's not just the Pirates, um, by the way. It's other teams. They do the same thing. They delay team, you know, the arrival, unless you're so good. And this kid apparently is very good. Right, but even still, I mean, we saw. I mean, remember the Cubs with Chris Bryant? Remember mm. they made him wait like ten days or twelve days the one season to so that you know that they could get the extra year of control or whatever. I mean, I, I think they'll do what they do with all of their guys and delay it and slow them down through the minors and hopefully, you know, I, I shouldn't say that, and I'll tell you why. Because that was how Neil Huntington operated. Maybe this, uh, you know, maybe these new guys, uh, you know, Ben Charrington and company. Maybe they'll do things a little bit differently and, and, and push guys through 
that need to be pushed through. But again, I, I just have my suspicions that it's going to be very much the same in terms of how they're going to try and sort of hoard those years of pre-arbitration and whatnot. Right. That could get nasty, though, with agents who want their client to be to that level. We'll see how it plays out. But it's a good problem to have because that kid is going to be a good, you would think, top of the rotation kind of guy. All right, the football news of the day was J.J. Watt. It's an ever-changing story. We hear that name. People immediately think it's got to be a brother's reunion. Uh, unless it's cheap, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think he's going to settle for cheap. But J.J. Watt, according to Cleveland.com, has interest in Cleveland. He thinks they're a contender. Uh, is he right, Paul? If he goes there, is he part of a team that could challenge for a Super Bowl? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I think that he's probably, you know, uh, if he goes there, that, you know, gives them one more guy on their defense, uh, maybe another dy dynamic playmaker. You feel like they're going to probably add some players in the draft and whatnot, and Baker Mayfield's a year older. And, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I, again, I, I look at the uh, AFC North, and it won't shock me if Cleveland wins it next year. No, I don't think so either. I think they, you know, a lot will depend on Baker Mayfield and if he can move forward. You know, it's interesting. We're looking at some stats today uh, on social media regarding Baker Mayfield and how Mitch Trubisky actually has better numbers than Mayfield uh, does uh, over the last three years. But, you know, Chicago is a team that is in need of a You're going to see a lot of quarterbacks move. I, I think that's the next discussion here, Paul. Where does Carson Wentz end up? Where does Deshaun Watson end up? Is it in Houston? Do they trade him? What would you do if you were in charge of Houston? This guy just signed just a few months ago a lucrative deal. Now he wants out. There's no chance I'd be letting him go. I would sit down with him and his agent and say, listen, we're going to try and build a team around you. Um, you can sit out for whatever, as long as you want to sit out. If you don't want to play here, but we're not trading you anywhere else, so you might as well get used to being here. Uh, Carson Wentz, it sounds like he's probably going to end up in, in Indianapolis which I think that makes the Colts a really interesting team next year. Um, Sam Darnold, I'm not sure where he's going to end up. Uh, it is musical chairs. What, what did uh, Adam Schefter estimate? 17, 18, 18 teams will have different starting quarterbacks yep. next year. Jimmy That's Garoppolo could be turnover. one of them. That's now, another guy. Yeah now, yeah, now I think that Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and Aaron Rodgers will all be where they're at now, as much as they've been squawking a little bit about how they want to move and this <laughs> and that and everything. Those three teams aren't stupid. No. So, you know, I think we'll see a lot of movement about guys like Darnold. I mean, Darnold could end up in Washington, right? I mean, they, they're probably, although they just gave that other kid, what's his name, Heineke, some money. But, I mean, there's a lot of places where these guys are going to start moving around. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's 412-575-2600. That's the number to call. Get on the air, and we'll get you on as soon as we can. We'll take a break. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call on Pittsburgh CW.